Hey everybody, Suze here for Revelation Quilts. I have come up with another great way to use up part of my scrap stash. This one takes two and a half inch strips and two and a half inch squares. So follow along, grab your scraps and make this with me. It is made with only one little block and it's just turned different ways. So let's get started. This project is so easy. You only need two different things for this project. The first thing that you'll need is I cut some of my two and a half inch strips into eight inch lengths. So I just have cut a bunch of them here and I've got them here. They're just all random. They're from my scrap stash. And so I just cut a bunch of those. The other thing that you'll need is two and a half inch squares. And of course, as you can see, I have a whole bin of these. They were super organized at, at one point, but obviously I've been kind of picking through it. So I'll have to go back and re-straighten it. But for now, this is the only thing that we'll need for this project. So to get started, I'm just going to take my two and a half by eight inch strip. I'm gonna iron it just to make sure that it's nice and flat. And then I'm gonna find a two and a half inch square that is will contrast that. And so it, it doesn't have to match. In fact, we don't really want it to match at all since this is a scrappy quilt. So we're gonna find a two, two, two and a half inch squares that um, will give a good contrast to the strip that we have here. So I found two of them. I'm just gonna iron them flat. And I am just going to put them on and I'm going to draw a line down that side. Now, if you don't want to draw a line, you don't have to. Um, I usually don't, but to make it easier, you can draw a line from corner to corner. And that will be your sew line. A pen that works would be nice. There we go. That still doesn't work, but you know what I mean. So you're going to draw a line from corner to corner, and then you're just going to sew straight down to that from corner to corner. And I have diagonal seam tape on my sewing machine, so that is what I usually use, and it works out really well. So I'm just going to sew that. And there you can see I have sewn that from corner to corner. And now I'm gonna flip it to the other side and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm gonna take this one, right sides facing together. And I want to sew it also from corner to corner, but I'm gonna do it, I'm not gonna do it from the outside corner in, I'm going to do it from the inside corner to the bottom. So if you see this seam is going this way, this one, is going to go this way. So I'm just gonna sew that one on. So as you can see, I've sewn those opposite. So they're going, they're going the opposite directions. And then I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm just going to trim that about a quarter inch from the seam line on both of those. And there I've got two little triangle scraps that you can use if you want to. And I'm not gonna press these open right now. I'm just gonna make a bunch of these. This is what it will look like. And I'm just gonna make a bunch of those and put them in a pile until we get to our next step. So I'm gonna do this whole pile and then we'll move on to the next step. So I've got quite a few of them made. I have a pile of them here. The next thing I'm going to do is to make this block, we're gonna sew four of them together and we're gonna alternate the way the seam allowances go on each of the four. So on the first one, I am going to make the seam allowance go towards the triangle. Oh, it would help if I turn on my iron. I'm gonna make the seam allowance go towards the triangle. So I am just going to pull it back and iron it so that it is straight and my iron will heat up in a moment and then I'll take the other one and do the same thing just pull it back and iron it so that it is straight there we go and I've got one of my strips there 
And then I'm gonna just put that to the machine with the long edge. The long edge is what we'll sew our next piece onto. And the next piece here, I am going to switch the seam allowances. So I'm going to make it so the seam allowances go toward the strip. And then, so I'm just going to turn it like this. And now one of my viewers mentioned that she had a hard time getting it straight when she stitches and flips. And so what I do is I just make sure that it's straight before I put my iron on and then I put my iron on and then so it is straight. Sometimes if you stitch, if you flip it just like this and then iron it, it gives it a chance to be wonky. So I am just going to fold it over, make sure it's straight first and then press it like that. And that's kind of what helps me. It's one of those things that might be kind of hard to explain. And then when you sew those two together, the long sides together, your seam allowances will be going the opposite way and so they will nest. So I'm just gonna sew down this long side like this and let me get it all straight, sewn together. There we go. And then when I iron this, I'm going to make sure that all of the seams of this block are ironed the same way. So I'm going to make them all go to the, I guess it would be to the left. And then I'm just going to put that back up. I'm gonna take my next one and I'm going to iron those seam allowances towards the triangles again. Put it where I need it to be. And the same with this one. And now I'm going to sew this one on so that these short sides meet up just like that. So I'm gonna flip it over. My seams will nest because they're going in opposite directions. Line it up and sew it on. And if it, it's easier for you to sew these on two by twos, that's fine too. But I just like to add a strip as, as I go. Okay, there is block, there's strip number three is sewn on. Again, sewing them all in the same directions. And then I've got one more to do. And I know that this seam allowance will be going towards the strip. So I'll get it to where I want it, get that ironed, turn it over and do the same thing. Make sure it's at the angle that I want and that will help me so it's not wonky. And then I'm just going to sew this fourth strip on like this the long way flip it over right sides together quarter inch seam allowance and then sew right down that strip and then make sure all my seams are going the same way and that is my block now we're going to trim these up to seven and a half inches so let's get this trimmed up. Now this is how I'll trim it. Um, I wanna trim it to seven and a half inches. And so half of seven and a half is three and three quarters. So I've put a little Sharpie dot on my ruler at the three and three quarters spot. I don't know, I hope that you can see that. And I'm just gonna put that dot right on the center line of that block. And so I can just come in here and make that three and three quarter line go right down the middle there. And I'm going to trim off this side. Oh, my sewing machine's in the way. Trim off this side and then turn it over or turn it around and do the same thing to the other side. Put that line right on that center. I'm gonna scooch it over so my sewing machine's not in the way. Here we go three and three quarters so it's seven and a, seven and a half this way and now I'm going to trim these sides and I'm just going to still put that three and three quarter line right on there and just looking at where my seven and a half inches is and I should be able to trim that up perfectly 
keep forgetting to scoot it over. Here we go, start over. And one more side. And there we go, that is our block. So that is our block and if that is just made with this one strip just turned in different directions. So let's get these all made and get them up on our design board and I'll show you what that looks like. So here we are, I've got all of my blocks up on the wall. Now, of course I did try this in another layout and I'll show you that right here, but I did put it to a, a poll on, with my viewers and they picked this one 75% uh, to 25%. So we are definitely going with this layout. And the way that I've arranged them is, do you remember how we ironed all of the seam allowances going one way on the whole block. So on the top row, all of my seam allowances are going that way. And then on the next row, they're going this way and that way and this way and so on and so forth. So that when we sew these rows together, every single seam should be able to nest and lock up so that will prevent a lot of bulk going through our quilt. So I am just going to sew my rows together making sure that all of those seam allowances are going the right way. And if you have one going the wrong way, all you have to do is flip the block around. And so then it will be going the right way because we sewed them all going one way, right? So that is what we're gonna do. We're gonna sew them all together. But it's also at this point that I realized that if I would have been a little more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Strategic. If I would have been a little more strategic in placing my fabrics, it would have given way more of a 3D effect. So what I mean by that is if I would have gone um, light, dark, light, dark on all of them, light, dark, light, dark, then that would have created this, this 3D effect. It has it a little bit, but if I would have been more strategic and planned it out better, that would have just jumped out. So of course, I'm now I wanna do one like that. Now, this is scrappy of course, but this would be amazing in a jelly roll since everything's in a two and a half inch measurement. Everything would just stand, it would be so easy to do with a jelly roll. Very easy to do. And so, uh, you know, let's sew them together and see what that looks like. Okay, so here is the finished product. I love it, I put a cheery, yellow border on the back. It's a four inch border. And then I'm going to bind it with some more two and a half strips that are sewn together. So that is just gonna keep that colorful thing going on. And I really like how it turned out. It is super scrappy. And believe it or not, my two and a half inch strip bin did go down by about an inch. So that really took care of a lot of my scraps. And so I'm pretty happy about that. This quilt measures 70 by about 45. And so if you want it to be bigger or different dimensions, you can just add your blocks, add more blocks, add less blocks, add another row, add another column. This one, I think I did nine blocks across by six blocks down. So you can change that and customize it however you want it to look. Check out my t-shirt. This is from my store on Tee Public. I will put the link to that in the description of this video. There's literally hundreds of different quilt related t-shirts, hoodies, mugs, all these things that you can get. And if you go through my store, I get a little percentage of that, but it doesn't change how much you pay for it. Right now they're having a great sale and everything is just $16, well, at least for t-shirts. And they're good t-shirts. They're not the super cheap t-shirts. They wash up nice. I have, think I have four or five of their t-shirts now that I just love. And so since I am lucky enough to be partnering with them, I am super excited about it. So I'm going to be wearing their t-shirts during all my tutorials because I just love them. And there is definitely one for you. So check that out too super reasonably priced. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. I really appreciate it. And 
Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Share, subscribe, and all that stuff. So I'm super happy to be here. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you.